Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have the latest from the live radar run for the UK V have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days it's still reasonably unsettled and pretty chilly out there especially overnight the next couple of days but it will be turning progressively drier and potentially cold as we head into the middle of the week as we do start to see easterly winds arriving from Scandinavia. Now, there is a lot of uncertainty about what sort of easterlies we are going to see. As we'll see from the longer range runs, they've actually kind of gone further apart from each other through today. Runs like the ECMWF still showing a cold pattern, potentially even very cold in its extended range. Whereas the GFS shows a brief easterly before turning it more to a southerly and eventually southwesterly again. And the GM is kind of in the middle, whereas a bit of an easterly but never gets particularly cold. It is very difficult to say exactly what we will see because then very subtle differences in the exact trajectory of that easterly wind will make huge differences of what sort of air masses we tap into. If it's more of a northeasterly, we will get cold air eventually from the Arctic. If it's more of an east to southeasterly, then we'll probably drag up less cold air in from Central Europe or even from the Mediterranean, which is kind of what the GFS starts to show. Even as soon as Wednesday, Thursday time, we've got discrepancies. Some of the long range runs still showing a generally mild air mass in place. The UKV, a high resolution run, actually starting to show cold air heading our way. So, as I said, lots to deal with today. And we'll have a look at what the most likely scenarios are. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, which you like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, if you start on the live radar, you can see we've still got the remnants of some of that precipitation around that we saw quite widely yesterday, where we did see some heavy snowfall in places. But at the moment, things are slightly milder, haven't got too many heavy showers around, and most of it is now falling as rain as those air masses are starting to turn a little bit milder some more persistent rain perhaps clipping parts of east anglia uh, again the radars aren't as uh, as strong out here so it's uncertain exactly how widespread and intense this is you can see some of these little glitches here again it's where the radars don't quite cover the full expanse of the area so we'll have to see what happens with that but it's likely just to skirt the east coast as this rain moves northwards elsewhere just a smacking of showers but for most actually it's pretty dry and those dry clear skies tonight will likely allow quite a harsh frost in places now if you look at the two meter temperatures you can see they are quite a bit milder today widely temperatures around the high single digits maybe just touching 10 or 11 degrees somewhere across southern england but for most it's generally around average for the time of year now if you go over to the latest UKV, you can see precipitation clearing early this morning and through the rest of this afternoon a few showers around and again some of that persistent rain perhaps clipping east anglia there overnight tonight clear skies for many dry conditions temperatures will fall away quite substantially however into tomorrow we'll start to see cloud and rain emerge again from the southwest but making very slow progress eastwards taking a number of hours to only move a few tens of miles and that is because it's started to come up against that higher pressure which is trying to push the flow in from the east and this is where we start to see that transition now eventually into monday evening to tuesday that precipitation again squeezes eastwards but really starts to stall across central england there and kind of dissipates away into just an, generally into an area of cloud and then eventually into tuesday and wednesday we start to see the winds properly come in from the east now initially not seeing anything too much with it a few showers around some thicker cloud uh, and generally nothing too bad but as we're seeing the air masses in a minute you can see that there is uh, colder air starting to filter in. The upper air temperatures here for Friday actually show some pretty cold air coming in from the east, minus 5 to maybe as low as minus 8. Now, again, as I said, a lot of the uh, models are disagreeing about what we're going to be seeing Wednesday to Friday for the exact upper air temperatures. UKV clearly showing something a little bit colder with a cold pool clearly to, sitting to our east. Other ones not showing anything particularly cold at all. So as I said, very little micro details and the exact tilt of that easterly wind could make all the difference. But here from the latest UKV, you would expect Friday, Saturday to be cold, overnight frosts, maybe even some wintry showers.
Now, if you look at the max temperatures, you can see today has said widely mid to high single digits, maybe just touching 10 degrees in a few spots. And overnight tonight, you could see quite a harsh frost in many areas. Uh, slightly milder from the UKV today than it was yesterday, but still many areas down towards zero or one degrees at best. Eventually, as we head towards Monday afternoon, 10 or 11 degrees in the east, but cooler further westwards as we've got thicker cloud around. And then eventually, as we progress into Tuesday, again, potentially an isolated frost. And again, temperatures around that 9 to 11 degree mark. Wednesday could again see a frost in some western areas with clearer skies and then in the day again 9 to 11 degrees so generally around average for the time of year and eventually into Thursday again could be a little bit chilly overnight and by the afternoon still again 9 to 11 degrees but eventually into Friday you would expect those temperatures to start to drop with that easterly flow not only those air masses pretty cold but if we look at the dew points starting to drop close to freezing as well again you need to see those dew points freezing or below freezing to see anything wintry falling out of the sky so we'll have to keep a very close eye on that but UKV definitely showing things progressively getting colder towards the end of this upcoming working week now if you go over to the latest GFS I'll be able to show you the GFS not really going anything particularly cold at all by the end of the week. Now over the next couple of days pretty standard low pressure trying to come in off the Atlantic but high pressure halting its progression. By Thursday into Friday we do see a little bit of an easterly but it's more of a southeasterly or southerly so huge contrast compared to the UKV at this such uh, time, uh, short time frame and you see the air mass that GFS has in it's around three to five degrees at 850 hpa instead the air that the ukv pulls in is still stuck towards eastern europe and scandinavia and instead the gfs just pulls up southerly winds and eventually goes southwestly pretty unsettled and relatively mild into the longer range so gfs very interesting today showing a massive shift away from uh, an easterly wind to something a lot more west to southwesterly dominated Again, I don't know how much to put into this simply because it is quite a big flip, but it is interesting nonetheless and shows you that this high pressure block that the runs have been showing consistently for the past sort of three, four, five days could disappear overnight within the ad model output. But we'd have to see the other runs agree before we start to rule out the Eastly wind lasting more than a couple of days because the GM and the ECMWF do go for it uh, still. You can see the high pressure building up towards Scandinavia, Eastly winds pushing in, but you can see that tilt is slightly more southeasterly than flat easterly or northeasterly, and that means the air masses by the end of the week are slightly milder, more towards freezing at 850 HPA uh, or above, uh, less so below. Into the longer range, again, we start to see some very cold air filtering towards Scandinavia, and we could tap into that, but we really need to see that high pressure build strong once again. So as I said, the GM's kind of in between. It's still showing an easterly flow, but it's not a particularly cold easterly flow at this stage. It's more of a milder, probably drier easterly flow. Uh, again, it wouldn't be incredibly mild at the surface. Again, we'd likely see still chilly conditions, but it wouldn't be cold. There would be no snow, frosts, or anything like that. If you compare to the ECMWF, though, this actually does build in a cold and potentially wintry easterly wind. And you can see over the coming days, high pressure builds up towards Scandinavia, initially easterly flow, again, maybe even a bit of a southeasterly flow there by the end of the week. But the high pressure holds on and eventually tilts more northeasterly, and we do see some cold or even very cold air starting to stream our way. Initially, actually, only really for the southeast corner, but would likely become more widespread as this air gets drawn in from Eastern Europe and up towards Russia and Scandinavia. So it would be pretty cold indeed. Look at the two meters temperatures here, getting down towards the low single digits, and by day, maybe mid to low single digits at best. And this is just as that cold air, very cold air, starts to arrive. So again, massive uncertainty here. Eastern BF bringing in something quite a bit colder, a good 10 to 15 degrees at 850 HPA difference to the GFS, less so the GM, but still big contrast in the next seven to ten days uh, means that yes we think an easily wind is coming in we're pretty sure easily wind is coming in and gfs putting a little bit of doubt in that but really the air masses at this stage are all over the place still unfortunately even in the next sort of five or six days ukv is showing a quite a big cold pool to our east other runs not so much
And of course, the best way to view the discrepancy is looking at the ensembles. Still, the white line, which is the ensemble mean, is around the 1991-2020 climatological mean. So, generally around where we'd expect to be. Still quite a lot of scatter, especially in the medium to longer term, but even some in the shorter term by the end of the week. So, yep, still massive uncertainty, exactly what we will see. And again, it could shift very quickly as we do get into the shorter time frame, uh, small subtle differences uh, do feed through into the ensembles, which are relatively low resolution. So do struggle to pick up on minute details that, for example, the UKV could be picking up on at that sort of five or six day time frame. We saw it similar earlier this winter where we saw that brief easterly wind back in January. Uh, we saw that really cold pool develop and it only really came to around sort of minus 10 to minus 12 level, only sort of two, three, four days away, seven or eight days away. It was maybe minus five at best. So that uh, that cold pool did get a lot deeper uh, and stronger as we got closer to the events, uh, as simply the model resolution wasn't high enough and it simply did uh, pool a little bit more than we'd expected. The similar pattern could be happening here if we do see that easterly wind come in from an east or northeasterly direction. So even though the ensemble members don't look amazingly cold at this stage, it can come on all of a sudden if we do, if the models do start to pick up on it. Precipitation isn't particularly low, as said in the last few videos, it's unlikely to be a particularly dry easterly wind. Low pressure does look close by to our south, so there will likely be plenty of showers around, which do look at this stage mostly to be rain, but we couldn't rule out sleet and snow if we did pull in some upper air temperatures that do go down some minus four, minus five or lower. Dew points, you can see are hovering around the low single digits. Again, if we were going to see something wintry, you need them more down towards freezing. And again, that will depend on the tilt of the upper air temperatures. And again, if we compare to the ECM 3F ensembles, again, you can see that they do go for maybe a little bit more of a colder pattern towards the middle of the month. The ECM 3F drops off. The operational ensemble drops off quite a lot around the 11th to the 13th. And quite a few ensemble members do. So perhaps East of OF is catching on to potentially some cold pooling around the middle of the month in around eight, nine, ten days' time. So as I said, it's going to be one to watch over the coming days. It's looking highly likely we see an easterly wind. Not guaranteed because of what we just saw from the GFS, but I said highly likely. And I said we'll just have to keep a very close eye on what does happen with those upper air temperatures it still is a little bit all over the place but we could see a milder easterly initially then go or wetter easily and then potentially a colder and wintry wind easily by mid-month that looks plausible but of course i'll keep you updated on what is going to be happening so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon